So, I welcome you all to the module 9 of the course titled Psychology of Emotions Theory and Applications. So, this module is about understanding uh, emotion regulation and coping, how they are related and the different aspect associated with emotion regulation uh, we will be discussing in this particular module. So, today's lecture will be mostly on the introductory aspects of emotion regulation. So, uh, just to give you a re uh, brief recap of what we did in the last lecture, uh, in the last module was about emotion based disorder and in that we have uh, covered two major disorders which are emotion based disorder, one is depression and one is anxiety disorder. So, in the last lecture we have talked about anxiety disorders in that uh, more specifically we discussed the DSM-5 criteria for anxiety disorders and we discussed also various categories uh, which are listed under DSM-5 uh, including generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, social anxiety disorder, selective mutism, agoraphobia, specific phobias and so on. We try to understand the symptoms of all these disorders. We also discussed uh, the various possible causes of anxiety disorder including genetics and personal experiences of life and we also at the end discussed the various treatment options available for uh, anxiety disorders. Uh, such as cognitive uh, therapies, exposure therapies and the drug related uh, therapies. So, today we will be talking about emotion regulation and uh, this will be an introductory lecture where we will try to understand the, uh, the introductory or various concepts associated with emotion regulation. More specifically, we will be focusing on emotion regulation and coping, how they are different and we will be talking about why we regulate emotions, why, what is the need and motivation to do emotion regulation and we will be also discussing how we regulate emotion using a model called as process model of emotion regulation. So, let us start today's lecture. So, the concept of emotion regulation is uh, something very important and it has a lot of applied implications because on a daily basis we regulate our emotions, we experience emotions and we regulate them. So, what is this regulation is all about? So, when an individual experiences intense emotions, uh, it may seem like you know the body and mind are kind of temporarily controlled by some separate forces. So, almost emotion has its own force and it almost takes over our mind body functioning. However, it may be very intense and sometimes it is almost taken over by the emotions, but still we have control over emotion in terms of regulating them. In terms of managing it in terms of uh, deciding deciding in terms of where to experience, how much to express and so on. So, that part comes under a reg regulation that despite uh, the emotion being very powerful and it almost takes over our mind body system, we still have the ability and control over some or controlling em uh, the emotions that we experience. So, regulation is talking about that part. So, emotion regulation basically talks about pertains to the methods by which individuals manage the intensity, duration and type of emotion we experience and do not experience. The circumstances in which they encounter a particular emotions and whether and how they ultimately express those emotions. So, it includes almost every aspect of management of emotion. It, in, it talks about if you are managing the intensity to what extent I should express or if I also kind of regulating to what to uh, to what text to what duration should it be for a, a brief time or, or it can linger for a long time or what type of emotion should it be a positive emotion negative emotion or whether to even express it or not to express it in what circumstances the emotion should be expressed or not all this th actually comes under the umbrella term of emotion regulation. So, in short emotion regulation refers to various strategies used we use to manage which emotions are experienced, when they are felt and how strongly they are expressed. So, it includes every aspect of emotion if you are kind of interfering in terms of expression of it and what situation it should be expressed and what emotions to be experienced. then everything will be basically come under the broad term of emotion regulation. There is a related term which is also used called as coping uh, strategies. So, there is a uh, difference between the term emotion regulation and coping strategies. Emotion regulation is a very broad term. It includes almost every aspect of whenever there is an intervention in terms of uh, controlling any aspect of emotions. Coping is more specific in terms of reducing uh, negative emotions during and after stressful events. 
So whenever we experience negative emotions, spe specifically after a threatening or a stressful uh, situation, then using coping strategies, we try to minimize those uh, negative emotions that we experience. So basically, coping term is used in that context. It is the strategy that we use to minimize the negative emotions specifically after stressful encounters. And emotional regulation is much more broader. It is not just about minimizing. It can even also include intensifying emotions and so on. So, while coping strategies are always aimed at reducing negative emotions, emotion regulation includes attempting to increase or decrease positive emotions or even intensifying the negative emotion if necessary in a particular situation. So, Emotion regulation is a very broad term. It may include uh, you know, decreasing negative emotion or increasing negative emotion or increasing positive emotion, decreasing positive emotions. It can include all kinds of things. Coping is more specific to reducing negative emotions. So, this is how these two terms are actually different. So, individually use a variety of techniques to regulate the emotions and uh, philosophers and psychologists have long been interested in implica implications of different approaches. So, people use different strategies and technique to regulate emotions. And all this, the different strategies that we use have their own practical application as well as implication in terms of how it impacts your life and determines the quality of life. So, some method may be more effective than other. Some emotion regulation strategies could be effective as compared to some other because there could be variety of regulation strategies that we will be talking about now. The most appropriate strategy depends on the situation. So, it depends on the situation of what is the best strategy to regulate emotions. There cannot be a generalized uh, strategy that can be talked about here. It mostly depends on the situation. So, in this module, we will be exploring this all these various emotion regulation strategies and assess whether they are effective or not. So, emotion regulation as I already said, it is a very, uh, it is a kind of daily phenomena. Every day we experience diverse emotions and whenever there is an emotion, there will be regulation part to it. Whether one is kind of effective or not effective, that is a different question, but we keep regulating emotions. because. We cannot all the time uh, in a raw form express all emotions. So, we kind of filter emotions, we kind of regulate them to our best extent possible depending on the situations. So, this emotion regulation is a very common phenomena in our everyday daily life. On a daily life, uh, we regulate emotions sometimes by holding back tears that we want to cry, but we do not cry. So, that is an emotion regulation. We sometimes pretend to be happy when we are actually not happy. So, that is also an emotion regulation. Sometimes we overemphasize joy or we kind of exaggerate the joy part of it, intensify the joy experience that is emotional regulations. Sometimes we re redirect our anger by slamming doors and kicking trash cans and so on. So, that is also an emotion regulation strategy. So, this all these various tactics are employed to regulate emotions, at least whatever is deemed appropriate in the situation according from person to person and this may differ from one individual to another individuals how person uh, deals with emotions uh, or regulate emotions, uh, it may also vary from person to person. However, all serve to manage emotion in one way or other. So, the basic idea is that they try to manage emotion in some ways according to the situation. So, uh, sometimes people intentionally regulate emotion means consciously they try to regulate emotions by putting conscious efforts such as when people say I do not want to watch a, the, a particular movie because it will make me sad. So, you do they consciously they decide not to watch a film because if they watch that film it will have an emotional impact and they do not want to experience that. So, that is a conscious decision. So, that person is consciously regulating the emotion or if somebody say I am really mad at my friends uh, let go and get some ice cream. So, if somebody is not in a good mood, they want to distract themselves, that is a conscious decision. If I do this, some emotions will uh, be reduced. So, this, these are the cases where people intentionally uh, decide to kind of to experience some emotion or not to experience or reduce some emotion and so on. Other times, individuals regulate emotion sometimes very automatically, you know, very unconsciously also many time we regulate emotion, such as when we uh, spontaneously avert our gaze to avoid seeing a scene of car accident. So, many time when we see a very uh, disturbing scene, we automatically remove our eye not to see it, because we know if I see that it will disturb my mind. So, automatically our we kind of remove our gaze from that kind of disturbing scenes. So, that is an automatic unconscious emotion regulation strategies. 
So, emotion regulation could be conscious as well as unconscious. So, the next question that will be addressed here is that why we regulate emotions? What is, what is the reasons, what is the um, uh, basic reason behind regulating emotions? Why people regulate emotion? So, we will see some of the reasons in uh, Nedenthal and Rick 2017, they kind of listed some of the important kind of motivation behind emotion regulation, why people regulate emotion, what could be the possible reasons behind it. So, one of the reason is hedonic motivation. Hedonic motivation basically means uh, that you want to feel better. So, whenever we feel something unpleasant emotions, you regulate that emotions or try to change that emotion with a pleasant emotion just to feel better. So, that is the hedonic component where you try to get more positive experiences and remove the negative, avoid pain and get more pleasures. So, that is the motivation. So, reason why individual may uh, wish to modify your experience or expression of emotions, uh, one reason uh, could be basically stem from that something that you are experiencing in the present moment is unpleasant and you do not want to experience that. So, you change try to change the tone or balance of the experience of the emotion from unpleasant to pleasant. So, if someone wants to regulate their emotion because they want to feel better, so that is the hedonic motivation behind it because they do not want to feel bad, that is something very basic motivation. So, hedonic motivation is what prompts people to uh, going to let us say seeing a com comedy movie or a comedy club, whatever it is, whenever they feel bad or sad or depressed. So, that is the motivation that is propelling them to see, you know, change their mood by seeing some comedy, comedy movies or something like that. Uh, feeling bad and wanted to feel good is associated with uh, sometimes people also use some strategies which are not very good that could be harmful like uh, some people get into gambling and addictive behavior just to feel good, but which could have a bad repercussions. So, that could also be uh, have an hedonic motivation behind it. Some people uh, uh, regulate emotions because of the instrumental motivation behind it. Instrumental motivation basically means it serves some purpose in a specific situation. So, you regulate emotion because it is necessary to bring out some outcomes or consequences and to, to particularly to do a task it is required. So, you there is an instrumental value to it. So, instrument motivation drives individuals to regulate their emotions to meet the demands of the specific situation because there is a need or demand in a situation. So, people regulate their emotion. For example, when you regulate your emotion because you believe certain emotions are appropriate for a particular task, you are motivated by instrumental motivation. So, if, if you are doing a particular task and it requires to express certain kind of emotions, then you are more likely to express that by controlling other emotions and expressing that emotions. So, then basically it is serving an instrumental purpose. So, for example, some studies found uh, even people attempt to increase their emotions sometimes like fear or anger uh, before playing computer game that involves confrontation of enemies. So, so for playing that kind of game you require certain emotions like anger or some kind of sometimes fear is required. So, it has been found that people actually kind of manipulate those emotions, uh, they intensify those emotions before playing those games just to have more effective, become more effective in that game. So, it is an instrumental purpose. So, they are kind of enhancing certain emotions just to do a task in a better way. So, that is an example of uh, instrumental motivation behind emotion regulation. Sometimes people uh, uh, kind of uh, regulate emotion for pro-social motives, pro-social means for the sake of other people. So, it basically means people regulate their emotion in order to protect feelings of others and maintain a social relationship. So, they might be feeling whatever, but they express very particular emotion in a particular situation, so that others can feel good and it kind of good for certain maintaining a relationship. So, in pro-social emotion regulation, individual modify their emotions and expression to fit social norms and expectations. So, we do not express any emotion in every situation. No? So, it is depending on the situation we express emotion because certain norm says that this emotion is appropriate for this situation. So, whenever in any situation where people are sad or sadness is supposed to be expressed, for example, you know, maybe you know death of someone or something, people do not don't show other emotions like happiness or those kind of thing because that is not appropriate in that situation. 
in that situation expression of sadness is more appropriate. So, sometimes social norms define what emotions are appropriate and this is how it is required in that situation and for maintaining relationship with other in that context. So, there could be many you know many study source for example, people uh, generally consider inappropriate to express feeling of let us say romantic interest to a partner of one's best friend even though they may be feeling that uh, that feeling might be there, but they avoid that simply because there is a relationship with the friend and that can damage the relationship with the friend. So, people kind of regulate their emotions even though they may uh, experience uh, that feelings of uh, certain feelings in towards a certain person, but they do not avoid it simply because it is not right in the context or the norm according to the norms or it may hamper the relationship. People also uh, exp regulate emotions sometimes whenever there is a situation of self protection is required. So, individuals may engage in emotion regulation uh, for self protection reasons which involves suppressing certain emotions or displaying an emotion that is not genuinely felt to safeguard their own safety. So, even though they may not be feeling something, but still they will express some other emotion just to protect themselves in a particular situation. For example, an employee might intentionally regulate their feelings of anger and express a calm demeanor in, a, in front of their employer to prevent any negative outcomes at work. So, uh, this could be an example of self protection motive for emotion regulation. So, an employee might simply regulate their feelings of anger, they may be feeling very angry towards the boss, but they were less likely to express that emotion towards the boss because it can be dangerous. Your, jo your job may be at stake if you express anger to your boss. So, people will regulate that anger even though they may be highly angry about that person, but they will not express that because it is, it is not appropriate or it may lead to danger in terms of their uh, job and other things. So, in order to protect their self interest, they will kind of suppress that emotion and express something else which is required in that situation. So, that is a kind of uh, self protection motive example. Sometimes people also uh, kind of regulate emotion for impression management, just to give certain impression to other people, they will express certain emotions. So, people may also have an impression management motive uh, which is which drives by the fear of being judged negatively by others or expressing any more inex inappropriate emotions. So, people uh, sometimes are driven by the fear that if they express certain emotion they will be judged negatively. So, they kind of control their emotion and express something else. So, this motivation is based on the knowledge of norms that decrease what emotions are suitable in a particular situation. So, in pro social also it is kind of determined by the norms, in impression management it could it is also the sometimes the norms that sometimes decide why people express certain emotion, uh, because certain emotion tells you that this is appropriate and it gives you certain impression, right impression to the other people. If you do not ex express the right kind of emotions, it will give a bad impression. So, in order to kind of make a kind of uh, impression management motive, people sometimes uh, regulate their emotions. So, these norms prescribe both outward emotional displays and feelings that one should experience in a particular situation. So, basically it, it is it is related to display rules define the appropriate emotional expression in a particular context and feelings uh, rules prescribed uh, that what one should experience in according to the socio cultural conventions. Okay? For example, in service sectors uh, employees are often expected to display uh, positive emotions and suppress negative emotion to enhance customer satisfaction. So, if you see most of the people who are in the sales job and other thing, even though they may be uh, you know people may be behaving very rudely and badly towards them, they still uh, do not express negative emotions. They try to make people understand and you know uh, show positive emotions and manage the situation. So, this is something that is uh, related to impression management and norms of that particular job profile. You cannot, if somebody is angry, you cannot just be angry towards them again. So, in service sector, particularly in sales and other thing, uh, people generally uh, regulate lot of emotions for impression management. So, the next important question is how do we regulate emotions? So, in that context, we will be using a model called as a process model of emotion regulation. So, it is a very popular model uh, proposed by Gross in 1998 and further he kind of uh, did lot of research later on. 
So, this is called a process model of emotion regulation. <coughs> so, we will be kind of talking about it, uh, the different aspects of this model. So, James Gross, he is a very prominent researcher in the field of emotion regulation. Uh, he proposed a process model of emotion regulation that outlines various stages involved in regulating emotions. So, a regulation of emotion could in involve di different stages of emotion regulation or uh, the different stages of experiencing emotion may require different emotion regulation strategies. So, it is a very, uh, very comprehensive model that talks about emotion regulation in a very comprehensive way. So, this is known as a process model of emotion regulation is based on the assumption that emotions are malleable and can be regulated intentionally. So, obviously, the it is based on the concept that emotions are not like fixed, you can regulate them, change them uh, depending on the situations. Uh, so, that is the malleability part is included in the assumptions of the model. So, that is a kind of uh, depiction of the model, uh, process model of emotion regulation by Gross and his colleagues. So, according to this model, so we will be talking about all these aspects. So, emotion regulation could happen in the si situation selection, uh, may involve si uh, situation selection, uh, situation modification by changing the attention or by manipulating the attention where we are paying attention, by changing cognition or thought processes and emotion regulation also can be there in the response modulation even after experiencing emotion still you can change the emotion or regulate emotion. So, this uh, three basically these two are related to the situation modification emotion regulation that deals with changing some aspect of the situation. Sele situation selection and situation modifications are related to situation to change some aspect of the situation where you are experiencing emotion. This is this part is involved with the attention. By changing the attention, you can regulate the emotion or change the experience of the emotion. This part is about appraisal, how you think about, how do you, you know, uh, think about a situation, how do you explain a situation, how do you interpret a situation can determine lot of emotion regulation aspects. So, this part is about appraisal. And this part is about response. So, when you respond in an emotional way, there also you can have some emotion regulation strategies to change it after even experience of the emotion itself. Okay. So, if you see this one, two, uh, this one situation selection, situation modification, attention and cognitive change, these are all called as attention focus strategy, sorry antecedent focus strategy. So, these are all strategies that we can use before actually experiencing the emotion itself. So, these are called antecedent focus strategies. The last one is response focus strategies. So, when you experience the emotion itself, then after that also you can regulate the emotions. So, this last stage is called as response focus strategy and all these four are called as antecedent focus strategy. So, let us kind of look into each of each aspect of this model. So, this model uh, includes 5 stage as we have already said yes. this 5 stage need not be like linear you have to linearly experience them, but they can be linear also and parallel also. The first one is situation selection that we talked about in this model is about situation selection. So, situation selection what happens here in this stage uh, in plus uh, you kind of regulation of emotion is related to the situation selection what situation you are trying to put yourself in. So, it involves selection of situations that will either facilitate or prevent the experience of specific emotion. So, a lot of our emotion depends on the situation actually, the situation where you are. So, by changing the situation, selecting the right kind of situation or whatever situation, your emotion will also change accordingly. So, this may involve avoiding a certain situation that trigger negative emotion. So, if you are avoiding a situation because if you go into that situation, it will trigger certain emotion like negative emotion and you do not want to experience that. So, you avoid this situation. So, you whenever this situation arises, you avoid it and go to some other situations. So, that is an example of situation selection. You are regulating your emotion by selecting situation. So, that is the thing or seeking out situation that elicit positive emotion. So, let us say you, you know, so for example is given here, if someone knows that being around a certain person causes them to feel angry or anxious, they may choose to avoid 
spending time with those kind of people. So let us say whenever if you, you may f, uh, may be angry with some person, you do not like the association of with, their, with a particular person because the moment you see that person you feel angry or for whatever reason. So, you will the moment you see that person you will avoid it avoid that person or go kind of hide from that person just to not to experience that anger by seeing that person. So, that is an example of situation selection you are regulating your emotion by avoiding or selecting some situation. So, alternatively if someone knows that a particular activity makes them feel happy and calm they may choose to engage in that activity. So, you are selecting situation just to experience some emotion. So, that is selecting or avoiding. So, that is related to situation selection, how situation selection can regulate emotion. Next is situation modification, here you are changing the situation itself to experience certain emotions. So, in this stage individuals modify the situation to change their emotion. So, this may in involve changing the environment, seeking social support or altering the task at hand to make it less stressful or more enjoyable. So, you are changing the situation itself to experience certain emotions. For example, if someone is feeling down, they might modify their environment by rearranging the living space or listening to uplifting music to improve the mood. So, let us say you feel uh, uh, down or sad, you can modify the whole environment or situation you are in, so that you feel better. Let us say you start uh, playing music in that room. Uh, just to change the environment and to feel better or you whole space you decorate in such a way that you feel better. The arrangement of things in the space could also change your mood. So, you are changing the situation itself, you are not kind of uh, selecting some other situation, but the same situation you are kind of changing it uh, just to experience certain kind of emotion. So, regulation of emotion using situation modification. Next is attention deployment. Third, uh, uh, category or third stage. Uh, here you kind of people uh, redirection of attention, attention is redirected to change the emotional impact of the situation. So, attention is changed from one place one thing to another thing just to change the emotion. So, that involves attentional deployment. So, one may choose to focus on positive aspect of a situation to reduce the impact of negative emotions or to distract oneself from distracting situation. So, for example, uh, of attentional deployment could be if someone is feeling anxious before an exam, they might focus their attention on the breathing to reduce the feeling of panic. So, somebody may just because of let us say examination, they are feeling lot of anxiety. So, they may just change focus change the attention or uh, they may kind of redirect their attention to something else. They may close their eyes and focus on their breathing and slowly, slowly the whole uh, the, they may become much experience calmness and so on. So, they are redirecting their attention to something else, so that the, they do not experience certain emotions. So, for example, you know even redirecting attention may include when somebody is feeling sad, they might redirect their attention to something that make them feel happy such as watching a funny video or spending time with friends. So, you are just changing your attention on something else. So, you are feeling bad, you are watching some funny videos. So, you are focusing attention on something else just to make yourself feel better. <clears throat> so, that is the how emotion regulation is done through attention deployment. Fourth part or st uh, stage or uh, aspect of emotion regulation is cognitive change. In this stage individual use cognitive strategies to modify their emotional responses. This may involve uh, reframing the situation in a more positive light or engaging self talk to alter one's emotional response. So, here basically you change the interpretation of the situation, you are not dealing with any situation change or anything, you are not modifying the situation, you are just changing your thought processes, you are changing your interpretation, the way you look at things, the way what is your attitude towards the things, what are the beliefs about things. So, you are changing your thought processes to change the emotions. So, and this is this could be very important because many times we cannot change the situation, the only option we have is to change the thought processes. How do you think about the situation can change your emotions. Uh, in fact, in the next uh, lecture we will be talking about uh, cognitive this reappraisal part in a much more detail how it can play important role. For example, if someone is feeling angry about a situation, 
<coughs> they might reframe the situation in a more positive light by focusing on the potential benefit of learning application, whatever it is. Some situation you may feel very pessimistic sometimes, but then you can reinterpret the situation to see, okay, not everything is lost, there are some other options we can do and you just change the option that something is good out of even bad situation also. You may just change your thinking, okay, even though the present situation could, could look very bad, you can find something good in it, let us say, you just see what is positive in it. So, you are changing your thought processes or focusing on something else uh, or thought process is changed to change your emotions. The moment you look at some brighter aspect, automatically the positive emotions will come. So, that is cognitive change. The last one is response modulation stage that uh, we talked about in the model. So, it is it involves modulation of behavioral and physiological response to emotional stimuli. You know. This may involves uh, basically once you express the emotion or experience the emotion itself, then how can you modulate or change the behavioral or physiological aspects to emotional stimuli. So, when you feel angry, obviously there is already an ang there is a behavioral part to it, there is a physiological expression to it. So, once that is experienced, how can you change after that? So, that is response modulations. So, this may involve suppressing emotional expression. So, you are already experiencing, but still you can suppress it using let us say uh, relaxation techniques to reduce physiological arousal or engaging in phys physical exercise to release tension. Now, you are already experiencing that. Now, what, what can be done? So, that is response modulation. So, you can let us say do relaxation, you can do uh, physical exercises to release the tension and so on. So, this will be all called as response modulation. So, for example, if someone is feeling overwhelmed by stress, uh, they might engage in relaxation techniques such as deep breathing or progressive muscle relaxation to reduce the physiological arousal. Alternatively, one if someone is feeling angry, they might modulate the response by taking a break or walking away from the situation to prevent the outburst. So, here it is after the emotion is experienced, people can do lot of things by suppressing the emotion or kind of modulating the response, not, not expressing the emotion that they are already experiencing by making some changes in the response itself. So, it is important to note that this process model of emotion regulation is not a linear model, <coughs> not necessarily one will have first situation selection, then situation modification, not necessary. People can parallelly work on different stages. Individual may use multiple strategies simultaneously and move back and forth depending on the uh, situations and the stage depending on the situation basically they can parallel way they can process or regulate emotion in different stages. And the effectiveness of each strategy may depend on individual differences sometimes. Um, uh, the nature of the emotional experiences, specific context, so many factors may determine whether something is appropriate or not. So, it cannot be kind of generalized to say something is appropriate in all context. So, according to the gross, uh, the process model of emotion regulation uh, distinguishes between strategies that are antecedent focus as we have said in the model. So, there are four strategies are antecedent and one is response focus that is the, the last one is response modulation. So, this is response focus regulation and all the four are other four are antecedent focus regulation. So, there are five stages, four are antecedent and the last one is response focus uh, regulation. Uh, model suggests that individual use different techniques at different stages of emotion realizing. So, each stage people can use different uh, regulation strategies that will be little bit looking here now. So, antecedent focus regulation strategies involve attempted to modify or control emotion before it is elicited. So, antecedent phase before actually emotion is experienced, you can do different uh, uh, strategies to regulate your emotion even before experiencing or, or emotion is expressed. Response focus modulation refers for uh, the it refers to modif modification of subjective expressive and physiological aspect of emotion while emotion is already experienced. When you experience an emotion, there are behavioral aspect to it, there are physiological aspect to it, you can kind of do certain changes even after experiencing that also as we have already discussed. So, out of the five processes in the model, four of them are antecedent focus and one is response focus that we have already discussed. So, if you see this model, situation selection, situation modification, attention deployment and cognitive change, these are all antecedent focus strategies and the last one 
is response focus strategies. So, out of 5 stages, 4 are antecedent focus and 1 is response focused. So, it is a, provides a framework to classify various kinds of emotional regulation that is possible for human beings, whether there is adaptive or not adaptive that is a different question, but people can have emotion regulation in all these strategies, in all these stages of emotional experiences. Within milliseconds and second after a potentially emotion eliciting situation, there are 5 distinct point at which individuals can intervene to modify. So, these are the stages where people can intervene and modify their emotions. It could happen very briefly, very, very uh, in a very short sp span of time. Uh, this point represent 5 different categories of emotion regulation strategies as dis discussed earlier. So, uh, sometimes this can happen very sequentially at the micro level when that very short span of time things happens, uh, people can go very linearly like at uh, situation selection, situation modification, they can happen very linearly, but they can also be used in parallel at the micro level when there is let us say when there are minutes, hours and days, people are experiencing certain emotion, then obviously people can parallelly work on different stages of emotion regulation. So, this emotion trajectory is not altered or ill regulated at the micro level, people can still regulate it at the macro level in all these stages. So, there are various options to regulate emotions, diverse steps are there. Now, let us talk about uh, the different strategies people can use in each of these stages. The first stage is situation selection that we have seen in the model. In situation selection, what can be done more specifically? Uh, generally, the research have done uh, more on uh, two strategies, one is confrontation and another is avoidance, confrontation and avoidance. So, in terms of selection of situation to regulate your emotion, you can directly confront with the situation that is one possibility and another is just avoid the situation. So, both can be done in the select situation selection itself to regulate your emotion. So, confrontation is about, uh, it is a situation selection strategy that involves choosing to confront you choose to face the situation despite it is negative emotions. Sometimes we do not want to face a situation because it gives lot of unpleasant emotions, but despite feeling unpleasantness you choose to face the situation. So, that is the confrontation. This strategy can be very effective in situation is expected to provide long term benefits. So, if facing that situation many times is required even though you may not feel uh, good about it simply because you need to face and deal with the situation because it is required for your long term benefit in your life. So, let us say you do not um, certain interviews are required and uh, you are feeling very anxiety and if you avoid that your whole one of the uh, no, no, this interview could kind of you know open a gateway for many career options, but if you avoid that you no know, everything will be lost. So, even though you may feel uncomfortable, but still facing that situation is very important, you know. So, in that sense, confrontation could be very important in many contexts. Uh, so, for example, another example is like public speaking can be induce very negative emotions in short term, but avoiding it may be counterproductive for future career options. So, you need to face and speak whenever required. So, it has a lot of benefits, most uh, especially when it is required for your benefit of your life and career. So, confrontation could be very important. So, various meta analysis have confirmed that confrontation may initially produce negative emotions. Uh, it is effective strategy for maximizing long term happiness and mental health. So, next is avoidance that also one can do in the situation selection itself, where you simply escape the situation. You do not face the and run away from the situation because it is uncomfortable. So, if a situation is not likely to be provide any future benefit um, or it, it has no detrimental effect, then it, it is fine. You can avoid the situation if it has no impact on your future benefit, there is no benefit uh, in terms of facing that, then one can avoid. But if it has some important implications for your life and future and career, then avoidance could be uh, very harmful in terms of it may have adverse impact on your life. So, however, chronic use of avoidance can be dysfunctional and uh, has been linked to poor long term well being and health. So, avoidance is generally not a very good strategy for most of the situations. Uh, facing a situation even though if it may be uh, kind of uh, very stressful or uncomfortable, many times is required for progression of our life itself. So, in situation selection one can either confront or avoid 
to experience certain emotions or regulate their emotions. This too have received lot of uh, research attention. Then comes in situation modification, what kind of strategies one can do? Three strategies uh, have received lot of uh, research. One is uh, research attention, one is direct situation modification, one is support seeking and third one is conflict resolution. These are the three important strategies that one can use to modify the situation to regulate one's emotion. So, let us see what are these three. So, in kind of in the case of direct situation modification, mostly it is also called as problem focus coping. So, whatever problem is there in the situation you try to solve that. So, direct directly modifying the situation itself to regulate your emotions. So, particularly in the stress tradition, uh, whenever uh, because of certain problem you are experiencing stress, one best solution is just solve the problem itself rather than thinking too much about it. Stress will not be reduced until and unless there is a source is still there. So, if you have some issues in, in a situation which is causing stress, try to solve that issue if it is possible. So, that is the best solution. So, that is called the direct modification or situation modification. So, it refers to practically uh, practical actions that are direct impact the situation at hand such as fixing a broken printer or rehearsing a presentation. So, you directly kind of whatever the source of issue is that you directly try to uh, deal with, with that. So, that you know situation becomes much more comfortable in terms of uh, or negative emotion is reduced and so on. So, this strategy is linked to increase well being, fewer psychological disorders and better uh, health outcome as shown in meta analysis by various meta analysis. So, one can directly change the situation, modify the situation by working or solving the problem itself. So, that could be one uh, strategy. So, another is you seek support from others to change the situation itself. So, it involves seeking assistance from others in modifying the situation. Uh, it is also considered very adaptive uh, by adaptive strategies. So, whenever you are yourself not able to do something, it is it is better, it is more advisable that you take help from other people who are yours in the, in the support network. Because with the help of others, you can kind of do lot of works that you yourself alone cannot do. So, your whole situation which was very problematic, which was creating lot of distress. Now, with the help of others, you can solve it and it will change your emotions. So, you can regulate, it helps you to reduce certain negative emotions and experience more positive emotions. For example, seeking the help of a counsellor to deal with a difficult child or asking a classmate for help to finish homework by the deadline. So, in a certain situation is creating certain emotions, distressing emotion. So, you are taking help of others to reduce that. So, that is the emotion regulation part of it there is a coping aspect to it. So, you can change the, say, modify the situation by seeking help. Uh, although in some situations seeking help may come with a psychological cost, overall obtaining help from others is generally considered beneficial. Sometimes seeking help can could cost you because somebody may also expect something in return. So, certain cost may be involved in some situations. Conflict resolution is another strategy that people can modify the situation. Uh, because a lot of situation, it is the conflict that is causing lot of emotions, particularly the negative emotions. Once then the steps taking taken to resolve those conflict is basically you are modifying the situation. Conflict is there, you are trying to reduce the conflict to change your emotions. So, that is emotion regulation could be uh, related to the situation modification itself. So, that is what is about the conflict resolution. It involves taking step to diffuse a situation of conflict such as if let us say there is a disagreement between husband and wife over sending their daughter or son to a boarding school. So, then one need to find a solution to regulate their emotions. So, different technique can be used to reduce conflict and uh, but not all of them are effective in achieving goals and resolution depends on the situation and the context also. Some method may only focus on achieving the goal that whatever goal is there if you focus on that aspect, but fail to address the relationship aspect. Uh, may lead to bitterness and resentment. So, conflict resolution may have different aspects to it. Sometimes, if you just focus on the goal of resolution, it may hamper the and you are not focusing on the relationship part. Probably, some things may be solved and other things may still remain. So, it all depends on lot of situ uh, situational context to kind of get into a proper conflict resolution strategy. But, you can modify the situation by resolving the conflict itself. While situation modification strategies can have significant impact on the emotion generation process, it is not always feasible to modify, you know, 
but it is not possible to modify a situation all the time. Some situation you cannot do anything, it is beyond your control, that is also possible. So, it is for example, it may not be possible to stop a sick colleague from coughing or you may not be able to remove a very tough boss who, who is creating all the uh, dis disturbance in your life because it is not in your control. So, in that case probably the situation modification may not work because you cannot modify the situation because it is not in your control. So, not in all cases we can do situation modification. So, in so other strategies may be helpful like attention deployment and so on. So, the next is attention deployment. So, it refers to as we have already says you redirect your attention to something else to experience certain emotions. Uh, research shows certain strategies where research has uh, been conducted to understand the attention deployment as strategies. It include distraction, people can use distraction, rumination and mindfulness strategies, these are all connected to attention deployment. So, let us see each of them uh, very briefly. So, distraction is what happens in distraction is basically it is basically strategy that is used to shift your focus away from the emotional aspect of the situation. So, a situation is causing lot of emotion you shift your attention to something else. So, that is the distraction you are not focusing on it you are distracting yourself to something else to regulate your emotions. So, distraction can take uh, the form of either physical withdrawal you simply do not move away from the situation itself or do not so that you do not see the situation. So, that could be also kind of physical withdrawal as a distraction such as avoiding or covering the eyes when faced a distressing situation when you see something very disturbing you just cover your eyes. So, that is a distraction that is also a case of distraction or you simply intentionally redirect your attention such as thinking about something else or focus on some non-emotional aspects or you just sim start focusing on something else so that you do not remember these things. So, it may work in certain situations uh, distraction um, may not work in some situation. So, empirical evidence has shown that distraction can be effective in reducing negative emotions especially when it is combined with problem focus coping. Uh, so, in some situation distraction can be helpful because basically you are just changing your attention to regulate your emotions. Various meta analysis uh, some of the meta analysis conducted also found that distraction could be effective emotion regulation strategy for managing negative emotion particularly. So, when you are very distressful you are focusing on something positive the attention is given on something else can reduce the emotions negative emotions. So, when a person feels anxious before a job interview they might use distraction by let us say like listening to music or watching a funny video or something like that can work at least for the uh, temporary sense. So, distraction can change your emotion uh, and it can help you to regulate emotions. Rumination is another strategy it is more uh, many time it is more automatic, but this is also uh, where people repeatedly focus on thoughts and feelings associated with negative event that elicits emotion. Sometimes when something negative happens and it elicits certain thought processes repeatedly you are thinking about it again and again and again many time it could be very automatic also because something is very disturbing and you are not able to get rid of it automatically thoughts are coming again and again. So, that is called as rumination kind of dwelling on that distressing thoughts cycle again and again. Uh, this has been found to increase the length and intensity of negative emotions. So, generally when you ruminate more the negative emotions persist for a long time because you are in that loop of negative thoughts and is associated with generally onset and number of uh, it could be associated with depression episodes also uh, some anxiety disorders also. As a result this strategy is widely observed in clinic a lot of psychological disorder could be associated with rumination like look like anxiety disorders and depression and so on. So, that is a kind of strategy in a, in, a, in a sense that it could be very automatic thing that can happen uh, where your whole attention gets kind of caught in the negative loop of thought processes. So, it may not be helpful, but this is what people kind of in terms of it persistence of it kind of prolongs the negative emotions. Mindfulness is another strategy that one can use uh, to regulate emotion. Uh, we will be talking about mindfulness in detail in next to next lecture. One of the lecture in this em uh, emotion regulation will be focused only on mindfulness. So, there will be discussing more detail about it, but in short it basically means you purposefully uh, pay attention to the present moment without judging including observing one's thought emotion and bodily sensation and external environment. So, here basically one opens up 
and uh, without judging the thoughts one just observes the thought whatever way it is coming good or bad thought we don't cling to the thoughts or identify with the thought then they don't generally thought cannot create disturbance the moment we become identified with the thought then whatever thought says you become that if thought says i am not good person you feel like you are not a good person because you are identified with the thoughts so in mindfulness you kind of pay attention but in a more detached way and whatever comes comes you don't kind of cling to it so then thoughts slowly slowly the, those uh, they don't no longer can able to kind of disturb you so in a in a very broad sense mindfulness is about that we'll be talking more detail about it generally this has been found to increase happiness and reduce negative emotions like stress anxiety and depression through various st studies have shown that it could be very helpful and healthy strategy to regulate diverse emotions uh, so we'll be talking about mindfulness more detail uh, later so the cognitive change uh, part we can also use certain strategies that research have shown it is the fourth uh, strategy it involves altering our thought processes to regulate our emotion or change our thought uh, emotions so you change your thought to change your emotions uh, in fact the next uh, lecture will be on focusing on changing thought processes for regulating emotion we will be talking in detail also about that so this can be achieved by modifying our thoughts about the situations or changing our belief about our ability to handle it so you change thought about the emotions automatic uh, thought about the situations your emotion will change or you can also change your thought about your ability to handle so that also influences your emotions so we'll be kind of talking about this also in more detail in the next lecture so both automatic and effortful cognitive change can occur sometimes you can automatically happen comes by more cognitive efforts are required that we will be see looking at it in the next lecture also so generally the research have shown in the cognitive change certain strategies have also uh, got lot of research attention like self efficacy appraisal challenge or threat appraisal this is where you can change your interpretation appraisal basically means interpretation challenge and threat interpretation can also include your emotional change positive reappraisal acceptance so these are the strategies which can include changing thought processes to change your emotions some of the important strategies so self efficacy basically means your ability your beliefs in your ability to handle a situation so your kind of self confidence or your belief that whether you will be able to handle a situation or not so that belief is self efficacy your ability to handle a situation your ability to do a task so that's your self efficacy so what is your thought processes how do you interpret your ability that will influence your emotion also so according to bandura higher level of self efficacy can result in decreased stress so if you think i can handle a situation i can perform a task so you will have less stress in terms of performing that task on the other hand if you feel i cannot handle that situation i will not be able to perform that obviously your stress will be much higher and this belief can be influenced by so many other things but this belief itself can can be very important in terms of your emotional experiences challenge and threat appraisal means how do you see a situation is it a challenging situation or a threatful situation that, that, that will determine the kind of emotion that you experience so in the concept of challenge and threat appraisal uh, it is based on how you perceive a situation whether do you do you think a situation as will involve losses or danger or this situation can involve some gain or some positive output to it how do you interpret that so that will determine your emotions so if a individual perceives a situation exceeding their resources uh, and focuses on the losses then it can be threat appraisal so the moment you see this situation if i face or if i do this uh, certain task in that situation i may experience losses or there can be danger to my life or my self esteem uh, then this is called as a threat appraisal you know you are looking at a situation with danger then it will lead to negative stressful experiences anxiety and so on however if you see some potential gains are also possible you can extend your boundaries you can put little bit effort and kind of gain out of it there is a possibility of it so this could be called as a challenging situation this can lead to positive emotional experiences so how do you interpret this situation will determine lot of your emotional experiences and how you feel that so challenge appraisal lead to lower levels of subjective stress and uh, the moment you see something as challenging then it will not be that stressful it will have some positive impact to you that is challenging but it can i can get some positive thing out of it 
it can also lead to a lower physiological stress experience in the body itself also. So, so it depends on just your interpretation, how you are looking at it. Is it a challenging situation? Is it a positive situation or it is a threatening situation? The emotional experience will be very different depending on how you interpret the situation. Positive reappraisal is again uh, basically re you re evaluate a situation, reevaluate it and uh, one's reaction to it in a more positive way. Try to find something positive in the situation and see the positive aspects to it. So, that is the positive reappraisal as looking for the silver lining or putting things into perspective. So, you see even though situation could be negative or anything, but you can find something positive out of it. So, in your life many negative things could happen, but sometimes negative things there may be some positive things are also hidden in it, you know. So, there may be uh, uh, many situations. For example, you know, even though maybe lot of losses has happened to you, but you can think still you are surviving, you could have died also. So, that is how you shift your perspective, you know, that you are still alive, even though many losses has happened in your life in a situation, but you could have died also, but still you are alive. So, at least that is positive thing, no. So, that is an example how you can do positive reappraisal, where you can kind of uh, find out what is positive in a situation. So, that is the positive reappraisal and uh, that can change your emotions. Uh, studies suggest that using uh, reappraisal strategies generally result in decrease in negative emotions. The efficacy of uh, positive reappraisal uh, also obviously, in terms of physiological aspect is questionable, research is not very clear about it, uh, mm, but in terms of uh, experience of it obviously, there can be it can shift to positive emotions. So, some studies shows there could be change in uh, positive reappraisal decreases autonomic response of the body, neuroendocrine and automatic response some finds that it increases them, some find there is no change and so on. So, obviously, you know research is not kind of clear in the physiological impact of it. Acceptance is another strategy that can also impact your emotions in terms of how you interpret a situation. It's, it is simply about acknowledging and embracing the situation. When you see the situation, you cannot do anything about it. You simply accept, okay, this is the fact. Now, I have to accept it. Just accept it rather than fight with it. A simple, this simple sense of acceptance changes your emotions from negative to positive or at least, you know, negative emotions will be reduced. When you start fighting, obviously, the negative emotions become higher. You try to change, but it is not possible to change. So, embracing the situation for one's inability to deal with it uh, many times that I cannot do anything about it, Let's, let me accept it. So, many situations are beyond our control, acceptance is very important and that acceptance can change your emotions very positively, can be especially helpful in circumstances that are difficult to change. So, accepting negative event that are beyond our control and accompanying emotion has been shown to be beneficial for mental and physical well-being. Because there is no point in fighting with it and resisting and suffering in it because you cannot do anything much about it. Try whatever best possible then accept if it is beyond your control. So, this acceptance uh, reduces all the negative emotions. So, because many times stress anxiety happens because of fighting and resisting with the situation that you do not want it, change it. If possible, change it, but if not possible, better to accept it. So, that is the kind of cognitive shift change in the thought processes. Studies have found that acceptance decreases negative emotions and provides immunity, reduces pain. Uh, however, it is generally not used by people with psychological disorder. Generally, people with the depression and other kind of uh, disorders may find it difficult to accept for some people. So, this. so, if they are not able to accept obviously, that negative emotions will persist. The last one is response modulation, what can be done in the response modulation stage. So, one, here you have already, emotion has already been experienced, after that what, what regulation strategies can be used. So, response modulation as we have already seen, uh, it is the, uh, these strategies can target different component of emotional response, including how you experience it, what physiological aspects to of it and behavioral aspect of it. Because once you experience emotion, it could uh, impact your experience, behavior and physiological part of it. So, response modulation may include things like sharing one's emotion with other, uh, using substance, some people also use like drugs 
alcohols to decrease their emotional experiences or certain anxieties and so on. Some people use aggression to reduce physical tension, some people conceal emotion or suppress emotion and so on. So, among them we will be just briefly talking about four strategies in the response modulation stage that is emotion sharing, aggression, substance abuse and expressive suppression. Emotion sharing is about in the social context mostly you share your emotion or act of communicating one's emotion to others through socially shared language. So, you just communicate and express what you are experiencing and kind of uh, that is the sharing, emotional sharing. It involves, um, it can help you to regulate emotion or decrease some negative emotions also. This involves describing an emotional event that one has experienced or witnessed often with the expectation to achieve emotional recovery through catharsis. So, sometimes just expressing emotion can reduce negative emotions. So, if somebody is feeling very bad, the moment they share it with others, automatically it reduces the intensity of the emotion itself. If some other supports back, then obviously it will be very helpful also. However, research has shown that the act of sharing emotion does not always lead to emotional recovery. Nonetheless, uh, the sharing emotion can have beneficial effect on mental health through indirect effect of reinforcing social bonds and transferring warmth and affection. So, that whole mutual transferring to each other, especially if there is a kind of trust relationship with other person trusting relationship, uh, that whole sharing itself can be very healing, it could have a healing effect. So, once you are ex already experiencing emotion, emotional sharing could also help you to regulate emotions. Sometimes people use aggression. Uh, physical or barbell aggression as a strategy just to release the body tension. People become very angry because of certain anger emotions. So, they will kind of throw things here and there and or kick here and there. So, just to reduce that physical tension you know. Uh, while expressing one's emotions is usually beneficial for mental and physical health, but research indicate that you know, especially aggression when it is expressed too much and you know, especially on others can have negative impact also because you then will get into the loop of others. If you just express it on something like you know some uh, like pillows and other thing then it is fine, uh, but sometimes expression of emotion could be associated with uh, cardiovascular high reactivity, heart beat and so on could have negative impact also. And it can damage social relationships, show too much anger on other people also. So, it, so it has its own impact. Substance use, many people use substance to regulate their emotions, especially when they feel bad in certain situation. They use alcohol, drugs and some uh, medicines to numb their thoughts, emotions or physiological arousal, so that they do not experience the anxiety of it. Sometimes alcohol, some drugs could reduce those physiological activation and you may feel comfortable and uh, peaceful for some time because of the effect of that things. So, moderate alcohol consumption all these things could be fine to some extent and uh, but habitual use especially of alcohol and drugs could lead to addictions and lot of other complications. So, they are not kind of people can use it for emotion regulation, but if becomes habitual that can have lot of negative impact on your mental and physical health. People also sometimes suppress their whatever emotion they are experiencing according to the context of the situation inhibit the behavioral expression of if there is especially the unwanted emotions they experience like anger and so on they can kind of suppress it also some people. Uh, so, it could be common in various psychological disorder although it can uh, decrease the observable emotion, but it actually do not change the whole uh, physiological and emotional aspects of it. we just suppress it you do not express it. So, but it is there kind of undercurrent is there. So, it can sometimes actually counter effective in a sense it can uh, increase the physiological activation because the whole emotion is suppressed. So, just like too much of expression could also increase the cardiovascular activity means too much of heartbeat and it can it can be bad for heart uh, and cardiovascular system and lead to some heart disease and so on. Suppression could also cause similar thing because it whole thing will go to the physiological system because you are not expressing it, but it can happen mostly when it is done for a longer time. Uh, so, it can uh, reduce uh, decreases well being and increase vulnerable to cardiovascular diseases. So, this strategy is not recommended uh, particularly for too frequent or for longer time. Uh, now, exp sub expression does not mean you have to express to the other person in there are many other ways one can do catharsis expressing it uh, 
not to any particular person, but some objects or even in thin air also. So, that is also helpful sometimes. So, there can be many ways of expression, but too much of suppression could have negative impact also. Uh, so, that is one thing. So, these are some of the things uh, that are related to emotion regulations that uh, we have discussed the five stages of emotion regulation and each stage there can be multiple strategies. Some strategies could be adaptive, some could be maladaptive depending on the situation. So, there are diverse options of emotion regulation strategies. So, this was an introductory lecture where we have understood the different aspects of emotion regulation. In the next two lectures, we will be talking more specifically about adaptive emotion regulation strategies in the coming two lectures. Uh, so, with this I will stop here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.